The video that you are about to watch is an excerpt of the original. After my long efforts in dealing with YouTube's copyright management system, I had to give up. I haven't given up my projects though. And while we cannot publish the entire video here due to the imminent danger of having the channel closed down, you can still enjoy excerpts which we've carefully chosen in order to make this video meaningful, fun, and educational. If you want to watch the complete video, including the sound of the music from the original recording, as well as special edition videos which will never be published here on YouTube due to the same copyright issues, and the Beatles 150 series, as well as other series and courses, you're welcome to visit my Coffee or Patreon page. I hope you enjoy this video. Hi everyone, back to the Beatles, and actually, I almost feel like saying back to basics, right? Because I'm beginning to appreciate more and more how the Beatles have been, were such a, such a, an important part of the development of rock music and, and modern popular music. And so here we are, back to basics, back to the Beatles. And well, this is number 44 in the series. Moving right along. I understand that, well, let's see what the title of this is. It's Tell Me What You See. And the genre is simply rock. I understand that John Lennon only had one word to say about the song, and that is Paul's. Rather, rather short and simple. And Paul McCartney's recollections are somewhat sketchy, saying, I seem to remember it as mine. I would claim it as a 60-40, but it might have been totally me. Not awfully memorable. Not one of the better songs, but they did a job. They were very handy for albums or B-sides. You need those kind of sides. That's interesting. Um, so it's not one that stood out to either of them. Obviously Vlad has picked it as part of this series, so I'm curious why. I'm going to listen to it and see what, you know, some of, sometimes these, these little unimportant ones have something really special about them. And maybe that's the case with this one. We'll find out. That is sweet. And um, I noticed a couple things about it that are, I guess, a, a bit surprising that I don't hear them in this because I've gotten so used to hearing one or another in in a lot of the Beatles songs. This one doesn't feature some of those little fingerprints that I've been pointing out from time to time. But I, well, let's go back through and and I'll tell you along the way what what they are and kind of the little special elements of this song. <laughs> Okay, a couple things. First of all, um, when they're singing, okay, it, it dives into two-part harmony right off the bat. Starting on a downbeat, no pickup, just instantly we're going with two-part harmony. They don't really sound very well together. It sounds like they're not terribly rehearsed on this. If you listen to this little bit here, it's just a little bit off balance there, which is okay, actually. It kind of gives it a, a very in the room, kind of around the campfire feeling of, we're just kind of gathering around, but it's, it's different. I'm not used to hearing them quite so unstable in their meshing of parts. The other thing that surprises me about this is I noticed right away going through the first listen, we have one note per syllable. I didn't hear once where there was any little melisma or, and, and I've commented along the, along the way how these little 
three note melismas at the end of a phrase or some little bit here or there really seems to be a Beatles fingerprint and I was I was a bit surprised not to hear it anywhere in this song but I don't hear it it's if you let me take your heart I will prove to you one note per syllable and it reminds me, actually this whole style reminds me a bit of a couple little uh, children's songs that, that I grew up with, old. They came out of some old songbook. I guess they've been passed down uh, from my grandmother or something. <laughs> One is, I know a secret, a very good secret, a dear little robin has told it to me. Just a, a simple little syllable, note by note. And then another one is, Good morning, Mary Sunshine, how did you wake so soon? Again, just moving along, kind of cute and sweet, and a little bit of rise and fall. This is a bit more extreme in its rise and fall. In fact, we go leaping up from the start, from, from a D, the upper part goes all the way to a G. And that's, that's really, I mean, that might be one of the reasons why they're not totally together, although they're they're pretty well linked most of the time, even with their wild leaps. But this one is going that far, or pitch it down here. Imagine trying to sing. That's a long leap for somebody to sing. And the other one is an octave. So we go. kind of an awkward line to sing. What they do, that these little children's songs don't do, is they immediately launch into a bit of syncopation. And I suspect that's another reason why it's a little bit tricky for them to lock in. Because we are on the downbeat here and we've been set up in a very square 4-4 four, four time. Uh, all the way. One, two, three, four. Kind of a, almost we could say a, a hint of Latin style in the rhythm isn't there. But to keep this, kind of helps keep this syllable by syllable singing style from sounding too pedantic by suddenly throwing it off the beat. We land, we start, if you, so we're on the beat on if. If you take your, and, and the, the beat happens between the syllables. Here's a syllable, here's the beat. Here's a syllable, here's the beat. Here's a syllable, here's the beat. Here's a syllable. And all the way through the phrase, um, till they catch their breath on this rest, it's that syncopated melodic line. That's not easy to do. And I suspect that it also has somewhat to do with their not quite locked in feeling with the voices. But as I was listening, I was expecting, where, where are they going to kind of stretch it out and get a little bit florid in their lines? They never did. They took some long half notes on tell me what you see. And that's about the, the biggest contrast. And it's not a complaint. It's just a, it's just a comment on, I was a little bit surprised not to find that in this song. If the other thing, so many things. Launching into a harmony and then finishing with a solo for the second half of the phrase. If you let me take your heart, I will prove to you. We will never be apart if I'm part of you. Okay, a little play on words there, classic Beatles. Um, and this is one place where I'm not sure that they really thought closely about it, but it actually kind of works really well because we have two voices at the beginning like two people. If you let me take your heart, 
I will prove to you. And it's two people facing each other. Two voices singing along. And then we come to the solo line, the single, the single voice. We will never be apart if I'm part of you. Almost as if the two voices have become one. Wouldn't it have been cool if, if both singers had chosen to sing that line together instead of just one of them dropping out? I'm sure they didn't have the time to put thought into it to that extent, but that would be a fun way of of making the music kind of mirror the sentiment of the lyrics, wouldn't it? If I'm part of you. I kind of like the way when he says, look into these eyes now, or I guess I, I feel it more on this second verse. The first verse, okay, open up your eyes now. Tell me what you see. That's, that's okay, but then we get to the second verse. Look into these eyes now, and the pitch drops lower as, as if you're looking a bit deeper into the person in front of you. Look into these eyes now, tell me what you see. Don't you realize now what you see is me? Um, Even in a song like this, where they say it wasn't one of our hottest um, compositions, you still feel the Beatles instinct here, which is always so spot on. Dropping down to give you this feeling of, of coming closer seeing deeper into the person in front of you, a sort of invitation to come, come and be emotionally and um, close and open to the other person. The music reflects that. Even in a simple song-like format, like this piece of music. What you see most of melisma. Tell me what you see. It's more like a little ornament. They could have gone, tell me what you see. And then I would have said, ah, there's the Beatles fingerprint, right? Well, we do have these long extended notes. Tell me what you see. Kind of as a a call for action, a, a call for you to, to come on, do this, do this, do this. Tell me, I'm here, I'm open, I'm sitting before you. I, I'm, I am um, waiting and ready and, and eager. Tell me what you see. And then, here is a classic Beatles fingerprint. This triplet. I've been talking about this since the beginning of this project. And would you believe it? We have one right here in this song as well. Even this simple little um, verse, 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 refrain. Yeah, simple, just some verses and, and a refrain. Not even any grand solo section in here, instrumental solo section. Tell me. You like that? That, that long shake, that long trill. It's, it, there is a sort of a Latin, Latinesque flavor beneath all of this, isn't there? Tell me why. Did dum. There is a little bit of, oh, I feel like I should be playing a sort of a, a Latin style accompaniment on the harp to blend with this. Actually, it wouldn't be that hard to do. I could sit down and probably work it up in, in a couple days and, and be able to play along with them, and that'd be kind of cool. I'll have to check the tuning and see if it matches the recording, but... Listen. What happens on a rising line as a question? How can I get through? Listen. And this is, this is the moment where I really noticed in the first listen that it was 
not just syllable per note, but on this trying, they actually had to compress two syllables into one short note, trying to get to you on a short note. That's, that's really kind of pushing it to the limit. You could have probably done a pickup or changed the rhythm a little bit, but they chose to stick with the same shape, the same melodic shape, even the same melodic rhythm, and just fit the words in there somehow. Smash it in, squish it, make it fit. Trying to get to you. Try to see that I'm... Let's kick it up here a notch. Let's... This is... The, it's like he's sitting in the back, getting a bit bored, maybe. And he says, okay, it's all sweet, but look, if you want Latin and you want something, let's, let's throw something in here. And he does. Don't you like the way this um, final verse, which starts, listen to me one more time, is repeated twice as if, I mean it, listen to me one more time. And we actually get to listen to it one more time. Time, how can I get to? How many of you have noticed that that, that hummed line is actually? Tell me what you see. Without the ornament. Tell me what you see. Is me. And that's the same little sort of triplet uh, interjection which happens dee 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 dum bum and it stops right about there. Yes, it's sweet, charming, simple. Uh, musically, it's quite simple as well. There, there are pretty much just the basic one, four, and five harmonies throughout. They don't do any of their exploratory experimental excursions into sidestepping to a different key or heart or chord or something or throwing in a surprise harmony it's it's very straightforward but incredibly well balanced and with just enough moments of surprise who would have thought of kicking up the drums where Ringo did really who would have thought of throwing in this da 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 ba ba bum bum da da bum bum ti the little triplet and duplet uh, interjection, um, and this going back and forth between which actually Beatles do quite a bit between two part and single line melody. But here it's set up in such a way that it feels like it's reflecting the sentiments of the lyrics. It's not just a, a musical design. It's a, it's a lyrical reflection as well. I kind of want to try this on the harp a little bit, this melody, and, and experiment with a couple of things. So let's see how it goes. I'm going to play it down in the range that they sing. So that's down here. Sounds kind of nice. Um, and of course we have to decide which one is the melody, which of these parts is the melody. Is it this? Whoopsie. Which has a nice descent, a nice fall, once we get up there. But it's a long leap up there, isn't it? What about the lower part? It's probably more would be classed as lead, so I'm thinking that's a little bit closer in range and probably if we were going to argue one or the other we would say that that is the lead melody, but our ears always gravitate towards the upper pitch, especially in a song that we don't know ourselves. So a lot of us probably hear this as the melody, but it sounds good together. Very nicely balanced together. What I want to experiment with is this syncopation thing and see if, uh, see what it's like to 
mess with it a little bit. What if we didn't have it syncopated all the way through that line? Instead of one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four with the emphasis on one What if we did it in such a way that this was a pickup? And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's kind of different, isn't it? And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It kind of makes it, um, well, I'll do it without counting. Just see how you feel with it. feel the weight a little bit differently, don't you? What if we were to start it one and two and three and then elongate one of the... Let's see if we can make this work with the lyrics. If you let me take... Well, actually, depending on which one we elongate, it could mean something different. But let's go. If you let me take your heart... Changes it a bit too, right? So. We could experiment with If you let me take your heart If you let me take your heart If you let me take your heart It's depending on where you put the emphasis, where you elongate It changes the direction, the emphasis of the meaning of the lyrics as well kind of fun to play with and it's actually an exercise that I have my students do when they're first th learning to to put music to words put words to music and think about what do you intend to convey well here the Beatles simply left it pretty balanced all the way through so it's up to us to decide how we want in fact this if is the shortest shortest word of the phrase but it's on the beat one. So they made sure that since it's heavier, it's also a bit shorter to balance out. So pretty much every single one of those syllables, if you let me take your heart, is weighted practically the same, emphasized the same amount. And so we can take it any way we please. It's a nice way of leaving it open and not pushing the listener towards one interpretation or another, uh, one emphasis or another within the lyrics. But it's a lovely tune. And then, of course, this is nice too. Oopsie. work well on the harp. I think that part fits so nicely on the strings. Let us say, do it some more, do it some more, do it some more. <laughs> but, but the idea is that it's a melody that flows nicely. What if we take it from the top? I'm going to have to scroll and play at the same time. It's a bit awkward, but we'll try because I don't have this memorized. I'll play it up here. It sounds good. It's nice the way that even on the simple tune bit of lilt here in this refrain that I like. And then it goes back. Wide range. And then kind of letting it linger in the air for a moment and we go again. And to contrast with that 
wide leap. This is close. Just a couple notes. And then we fall into and then Well, how did I end up getting into all of that on such a simple little piece? It's because even in a simple little song like this, when it's well-crafted melody, um, there's something that is so rewarding to explore. And it is incredibly sweet. That's the word that keeps coming back to me for this one. It's sweet. It's charming. It's gentle. It's... There's a sincerity to it, which, um, for being a, it's kind of a throwback towards their earlier love song, um, shall we say, recipe. Something about love and find a way to give it a different angle and we have another song. But it's the sweetness and the charm that is embedded in it, not just the lyrics, but the music as well, that makes it so appealing and so attractive. Well, there you have Tell Me What You See. Very nice. I'm sorry they didn't think terribly highly of it. I understand what they're saying. It wasn't, it's not a song for a great hit, but it is very sweet. I'll see you soon. <laughs>